。見てください。俺のこの目。うん、こいつは人が善人か悪人か、まるで見分けられないんですよ。そんなやつに弁護士なんて任せちゃダメです。The search for truth is fraught with wrong turns and blind eyes. In the crumbling halls of justice, where the stands cast dark shadows on the innocent and the guilty hold the gavel, the truth dies. There might be no saving it. You can cast the light down the corridors, rip the curtains from the wall, and bathe the room in the sun. The more you shine from on high, the darker those shadows get. The harder it is to see the filth in those places light will never reach. But down there, where you can't see, that's where the truth is. Bengoshi de Aleba, Shikokunin no Muzai ga showmen sareta kono jiten de shigoto a kanlio suru. Demorewa, Bengoshi ni fukki shita wake janai. It's better not to force the issue. It might be darker than you'd like, but it keeps the shadows weak, mild, penetrable. Once your eyes adjust, You see things clearly. The monsters underneath our beds, the skeletons in our closets, and the truth. On September 20 something, 2018, Toshihiro Nagoshi appeared on stage at the Tokyo Game Show with fandom shaking news. Ryuga Gotoku Studios would be making a brand new IP helmed by Nagoshi himself. Hesitant to call it a spin off, as they had so willingly done before. He insisted this title would be a new taste of what RGG Studios could offer. Dubbing it a legal thriller or legal suspense, depending on who's translating, it would revolve around one Takayuki Yagami, an ex lawyer turned detective, hounded by a case from his past. Nagoshi mentioned the player would be performing their own investigations, alluding to detective like mechanics. It was a big promise from a studio which had only known one genre for the last 15 years. Whether or not they made good on it, however, Is our story here today. For we are the audience to RGG Studios' ambition. Ours are the judging eyes that seek the truth. The time is nigh. Truth is within our grasp. This is Ryuga Gotoku's judgment. And I don't know, man, it's kind of all over the place if I'm being honest. It's difficult to explain the ways judgment underwhelms me via bird's eye view, by which I mean, I can't tell you why judgment as a whole doesn't execute well, because I'm not sure what judgment as a whole is trying to be. All I can say is, it's trying to be a great many things without committing wholeheartedly to being any of them. If you've heard the phrase greater than the sum of its parts, perhaps you might recognize its less thought provoking and not as frequently invited cousin, lesser than the sum of its parts. Judgment. Is lesser than the sum of its parts. But it would be a disservice to you, the viewer, and perhaps those poor crunched souls who put so much faith in their work, to end the discussion there. It would also make for a bad YouTube video, and we have plenty of those, thank you. Instead, it may prove insightful to inspect judgment from different paradigms of what it could be, three separate concepts it utilizes to deliver onto us a unique experience. Each isolated and studied for its effectiveness. Judgment's attempt at noir novella storytelling is no mystery to any detective's tale enthusiast. In an interview with Game Revolution, when asked about Judgment's proposed darker themes, Kazuki Hosokawa, one of its producers and judging by several accounts at least half responsible for Judgment's inception, said, As you can tell with legal suspense, There's going to be a lot more darker themes incorporated into the story itself, and with crime solving comes this kind of noir theme. It was Ryuga Gotoku's intention to deliver a detective story with a legal twist. Their casting choice was ideal. Takayuki Yagami would be played by Takia Kimura, a prolific actor well known for starring in Hero, a legal drama about a public prosecutor who investigates potential suspects much like a detective would. Before deciding whether or not to press charges on them. Alongside Nagoshi's own love for film and drama, one can assume expectations were high. As a detective drama, judgment was in good hands. But there's one overlooked detail we can't brush under the rug, especially if we view judgment as a great detective mystery. Takayuki Yagami is a terrible detective. Judgment as a detective drama is. Not a particularly successful one. 
While it opens with a strong, book-ended investigation and trial establishing Yagami's competencies and his relationship with the world of Kamado Cho, the tight storytelling in Chapter 1 quickly unravels into a poorly paced story of the world's worst detective. So, detective dramas, detective stories, right? They are composed of some pivotal elements in order to be compelling. The first one, a mystery. These are your missing persons, your murder cases, your strange towns, and stranger people. A detective is only as good as the mystery they solve. Straightforward, right? And Judgment has mysteries in spades. More on that later. The second one is setting. You need a good mystery in a fitting setting. The city that never sleeps, the foggy harbor town, the sleazy red light district, maybe with a sci-fi twist. Judgment nails this. Kamado Cho is a perfect setting for a grisly murder, a city run by organized crime with dark plots in action at every corner and unsuspecting victims without a clue. These aren't the only choices you can make, but the setting sets your detective drama apart from the others and influences the kind of character your protagonist is. It's what makes the anti-dandy Sherlock Holmes stand out against the rest of Victorian society, or the upper echelons of California disarmed by the schlubby but charming Columbo. The setting is the belief system, the way of life, the behavior your detective aims to disrupt, dismantle, and hopefully survive in. Bringing us to the third and most important part of a good detective story, the detective themselves. Yagami, by design, belongs in Kamado Cho. Raised in Kamado Cho, lives in Kamado Cho, blends into Kamado Cho. His existence doesn't challenge the status quo of the seedy red light district or stand out as a beacon of change and rebellion for the folks suffering underneath ruling powers. Neither is he hard boiled or representative of how a place like Kamado Cho can harden someone against its worst elements. Yagami is a typical everyman in a mystery requiring eccentricity to solve. Who we really need is standing right beside him. Kaito, the ex-Yakuza turned detective, helps Yagami solve cases and uses his knowledge of organized crime to chase after leads. After being the fall guy for an inside job, Kaito is an outcast in the Yakuza-owned Kamado Cho. His garish orange shirt evokes Dick Tracy's yellow trench coat, a visual contrast to his surroundings. A victim of deceit, Kaito has excellent motivation for a detective obsessed with the truth. In fact, he's such a better fit, he steals the spotlight whenever he's on screen. By comparison, Yagami's motivation is complicated and underwhelming. He gets a client acquitted for murder, then deeply regrets it when they're arrested for murder again. To the audience, this is an obvious setup to later reveal said murderer is innocent. However, Yagami believes his client was, in fact, guilty, and judgment rolls with this flimsy characterization all the way up to the end of the game. Perhaps an attempt at subverting expectations, but once announced to the audience, it never becomes a real sticking point for the Yagami character. What ends up happening is, as an audience, Yagami's lack of conviction towards the truth clashes with his supposed search for it. It's hard for us to believe he cares about the mysteries at all and feels more like he's doing all of this out of career obligation. It's then turned over in the final chapters of Judgment when, after an entire game's worth of not developing this character motivation, Yagami suddenly has a change of heart about his old client's innocence, an attempt at a common detective trope without any of the buildup or central focus necessary to make it work. Judgment does a poor job connecting Yagami on a personal level to the case which forever changed his life. Chapter 1 lays solid groundwork for the Emichan character, who was killed by the man Yagami defended in court. He expresses a deep sense of regret and struggles to think about her when brought up, and in the prologue we can see him devastated by the news of her death. But as the story continues, we have zero time dedicated to explaining exactly who Emi was or what she meant to Yagami. There's an implied familiarity, but it isn't touched on, until a flashback chapter reveals Yagami and Emi's relationship was only a passing association due to the case he was working on. Little to no rapport is built between Yagami and the person his guilt revolves around. His detective work lacks a compelling force behind it, and the audience lacks a compelling reason to root for him. 
Not all detectives have a deep, dark secret underneath the leather jacket, but judgment promises one without delivering on it, and that's why I lose interest in Yagami. Him and his method of investigation. Sherlock Holmes solves mysteries by carefully studying his surroundings and making deductions via the details. Columbo models his interrogations out of casual conversation and listens closely to the suspect's responses while carefully making note of any discrepancy. My question to you, dear viewer, is how does Takayuki Yagami solve his mysteries? What defines his detective work? Not deduction, not finding contradictions, it's walking up to and asking people who might know. In other words, the most boring way possible. Our detective in judgment isn't coming to their own conclusions through careful deliberation or gut instinct. Yagami is constantly meeting with suspect after suspect, getting into multiple fistfights with them, and then demanding answers until he gets one. In some cases, he's in a losing scenario, and circumstances outside of his own abilities or detective work result in one of his suspects just giving him the information. Yagami himself never makes an actual judgment call based on the information he's collected, save for one time when he gets it wrong. As far as being an actual detective goes, he collects all this data and then can't put together an answer until he beats it out of someone. This repeated lack of cleverness from our protagonist makes him less credible over time. I was struggling to pay attention to Yagami's deliberations where he reiterates for the upteenth time all the evidence he's collected so far. It didn't matter what he was saying because he wasn't going to make a brilliant deduction with it. I knew it would amount to identifying who he needed to punch up next. This works for Kazuma Kiryu, but not for a character designed to be a thoughtful, clever detective. This works for Yakuza, but not for a title overtly trying to be a different experience. In the same interview with Game Revolution, and again across multiple interviews in different words, Kazuki Hosokawa states, We were also very interested in how the users, how the players were going to react to this much different sort of vibe and theme versus Yakuza. So we really weren't interested in creating something similar to Yakuza. Also, we wanted to do something new with a new character. When Judgment isn't reiterating the same story beats over and over again, it has enthralling cutscenes which, in a vacuum, make for excellent storytelling. Scenes where Yagami and Kaito can bounce off one another, or climactic reveals where new information cuts through the barrage of redundant dialogue to push the narrative towards a conclusion. In a vacuum though, where we don't have to worry about how this scene connects to what we've been doing or what's been going on, where the buildup to these scenes is irrelevant and the follow through doesn't matter. As part of the grander tapestry of storytelling, these scenes are well-executed examples of how to engross your player back into the narrative in a triumphant moment of rising action, bogged down by Judgment's fear of maintaining it. It's guilty of murdering its own momentum. Detective novellas, noir narratives, legal suspense thrillers, however you want to name them, they require an author's confidence. A certainty in delivery and message, a resolute tone pulling the audience in and convincing them to go on this dangerous chase for answers. Whether time is of the essence doesn't matter so long as we're always getting closer to the truth. Every scene has a clue, every character is suspicious, and every answer is another question we ask ourselves. When judgment adheres to this principle, it's exemplary. Foreshadowing future events using what a character is wearing in a prior scene or creating a network of relationships between several characters to trap players in a net of second guessing who the culprit is. What constantly brought me back to life playing Judgment was realizing I still didn't have a solid bet on who the killer in our mystery was. It's not because Judgment lacks good suspect characters. Every possible suspect has a plausible motivation and opportunity for the crimes committed. Multiple people trying to keep the killer's identity a secret for different reasons. 
The stakes rise the closer to the truth we get, and the scale of the mystery grows with every lead we follow. Judgment has all the bones of an awesome detective drama, but it lacks that quintessential confidence in itself. Whenever the story picks up, whenever a new twist gives way to urgency and action, Judgment will put a pause on main scenario events to force the player into mandatory side cases having nothing to do with the central plot. And I really mean nothing. Side stories about who ate the cake in the office, Kaito's old buddy who's a con artist now, or a local gang harassing civilians will interrupt the suspense in cutting fashion. This deflation is followed by judgment resetting its pacing, as if bombshells hadn't just been dropped prior. For example, because the story had to be put on hiatus for us to interact with a Persona 5 reference, judgment feels the need to remind the player of every bit of information we've already learned. It's constantly stopping the forward movement of the plot to have characters sit in a room and go over the same information over and over again. Your eyes start to glaze over at what anyone is saying. It's boring. Ironically, it was done in an effort to keep the player's attention. In an interview for Dengeki Online, director Koji Yoshida explains they believed the main story wouldn't be enough to keep players interested. We quantified the side cases based on the assumption that players would only follow the main storyline. The reason for this is that if we had considered all the side cases and the peak of the player's enjoyment, the main story alone would be too short to be enjoyable. This is a roughly translated quote using the DeepL translator, so the exact words might be different and he's not specifically talking about including side cases in the main scenario. But given his position, it's likely this sentiment inspired mandatory side cases in between chapters. This isn't a letdown just because their inclusion ruins the pacing though. Detective stories are perfect for seemingly irrelevant subplot threads to become moments of triumph and epiphanies leading to solutions. But it seems as though whoever was designing side cases for Judgment wasn't communicating with the main scenario writer or perhaps didn't have time to. None of the side cases we're forced to play tie back into the main scenario, even when some of them act as perfect setup for a payoff the main scenario needs later on. The perfect example of this is an early required side case where Yagami learns one of his longtime bar friends is a professional gambler after following her to an underground illegal casino. This is unimportant until later when Yagami is looking for another hard to find underground casino and he literally says, if we want to gamble, we ask a gambler. Naturally, this is a perfect time for Yagami to use his contacts in order to chase a lead he's having trouble finding. But instead of talking to his pro gambler friend, we're forced into a drawn out gameplay segment talking to random NPCs at the casino until one of them agrees to give us information by beating them in a round of poker. Wasted opportunities like this plague judgment at every corner, and the constant interruptions and roundabout way Yagami solves anything kills the enthusiasm behind its narrative highs. Overall, judgment as a legal suspense story, as a detective novella, as a mystery lacks key components necessary to make it an effective one. What it exceeds in doing is undermined by a lack of faith in those elements. It plays to its weaknesses without subverting the genre in a satisfying way or giving us substance to sink our teeth into. Because it constantly repeats itself, the narrative doesn't develop as much as you'd hope and you come away from it feeling largely unsatisfied by its conclusions. This lack of confidence in itself is at the center of most of Judgment's problems and persists across other observations you can make about it. Judgment isn't just a detective drama, it's a detective drama game, and while it fares much better as one, it can't escape its core weaknesses, no matter how badly it wants to avoid admitting them. If you're staring at my fidget spinner right now, it's because you think it's more interesting than what's happening on screen. I don't make the rules, I just live by them, alright? If you're more entertained by the fidget spinner than the cutscene, you officially think the fidget spinner is more interesting than Judgment's narrative. There's your challenge. If you look, you lose. If you look at the fidget spinner, you lose. I pointed it out. Yeah, I did. 
させた。I did. I'm telling a better story. <laughs> yes, when we were solving the problem. Yes, you did. When we were solving the mystery of who ate the cake, a subcase scenario that was required. It was required. We had to do that. It was literally. I mean, it was literally like a like a chapter ago. It was. <laughs> Takayuki Yagami might be a terrible detective, but it's in spite of judgment providing him every tool possible to make him a good one. What I'm saying is. Even though Judgment's detective storytelling kind of stinks, there's a ton of effort to make it a fairly interesting detective game. It understands the romance behind the art of investigation. Player agency is the utmost priority, and to achieve this, Judgment goes beyond the usual Ryuga Gotoku formula to include more mechanics focused on exploration and investigation. I'm not off base in this assumption. Nagoshi said as much in an interview with Kotaku. Our challenge for judgment started with the character. Yagami would be an ex-lawyer, now a detective. A game befitting this character would need to have a heavier focus on adventure elements. By adventure elements, I mean investigation and a gathering of evidence. These adventure elements Nagoshi describes are what gives judgment its edge, but it's easy to miss if you're preoccupied with where the inspiration came from. Ace Attorney. I'm talking about Ace Attorney. Now sure, I could tell you about crime scene investigations and interrogations and judgment being direct parallels to the Ace Attorney system of exploring areas and pressing for evidence. In fact, I just did. And I could frame the rest of the legwork you do in judgment as extensions of those, but it'd be incredibly reductive. You wouldn't know how tailing missions in judgment have a surprising amount of freedom in how you choose to follow your suspect across Kamado Cho. You'd miss out on how the Ryuga Gotoku patented notoriously long cutscenes in Judgment are often broken up by interactive questioning sections where extra experience is awarded for asking the right questions. You'd never find out about the side comments Yagami gives about the quality of photos you end up taking, nor would you learn taking smoke breaks in the city helps you pick up gossip about potential side cases. Throw in a lockpicking minigame and you'd be kept in the dark about a great many fun systems at play in Judgment. But I just told you about all those things, so now you know. You're welcome. Let's talk about immersive sims. Judgment isn't an immersive sim, not by miles, but as all great detective games tend to do, it borrows secondary and tertiary features immersive sims are commonly known to have. I can't get out of my head how close Judgment is to being a game without wrong choices. Tailing missions are so flexible and make great use of the city, to a point where I started to test the boundaries of how I could follow and was excited to discover the built-in hiding spots are a suggestion, not a requirement. It was always in a different part of Kamado Cho. Having to pay attention to your target's behavior and maintain distance and speed with them was a good attention getter, and having plenty of hiding spots to choose from made it feel like I was applying my own detective style to the task. Asking the right questions to characters in order to yank more information through their teeth gave me time in Yagami's shoes. It included me in the search for truth, and provided me the chance to think like a detective, directly reflecting my thoughts onto the dialogue. And I thought the way Yagami's detective agency finds more work, the more reputable he is to the people of Kamado Cho, stellar. Integrating himself with shop owners and persons of interest to spread word of mouth about Yagami's abilities is rewarding when you start to unlock special side cases as a result of your efforts to be a man of the people. I even enjoyed having to remember which key belonged to which locked door and thought lockpicking was a fun if infrequent extra detail about Yagami's detective work. The key word is infrequent. See, Judgment has all the mechanical trappings of a solid detective mystery game and encroaches into immersive sim territory with all kinds of social simulation activities shuffled into those missions I mentioned earlier. But it doesn't fully commit to separating itself from Ryuga Gotoku. Even though it introduces two different forms of lockpicking and possesses a system to reward players for thinking like a detective during cutscenes, it rarely asks us to use them. As much praise as I can give it for breaking up some cutscenes with questioning mechanics, I can just as easily criticize it for not doing it enough, especially when the opportunity strikes to let your player chew the scenery alongside the other characters so often. 
There's nothing in Kamado Cho to lockpick that isn't part of a couple of main scenario segments or the VR dice rolling minigame. I can't explore the city and find locked safes or office building doors to find goodies inside of, or stumble into a side case that was hidden behind an area difficult to get to. Side cases use these mechanics even less, except for tailing missions which, knowing how many other systems could be at play, feel overutilized and repetitive at times. Essentially, every new aspect of Judgment setting it apart from other Ryuga Gotoku titles is used so sparingly as to create a drought where their presence is lacking. And dude, I'm so thirsty. Unfortunately, for as revitalizing as these new features are, Judgment would rather fall back on Like a Dragon's safe gameplay loop and recognizable systems than attempt to be entirely unique. We need to remember the reality of Ryuga Gotoku Studios' production pipeline to make sense of this choice. You know this from previous episodes of Quest Respective. RGG Studios works on claustrophobically tight schedules. An interview by Niche Gamer with Nagoshi alluded to his desire to make Judgment more heavily focused on its brand new ideas. Judgment is all about solving mysteries and investigating, and that's what's fun about it. If I were able to enhance those elements about Kamurocho, make it more investigation-focused, but incorporate more of the actions that tie into the cityscape, that would have been great, but, of course, that would obviously cost a lot more to continue developing it like that. We didn't do it, but that's something that would have been fun. Koji Yoshida felt the exploration and detective elements of Judgment should have been the driving force, but deadlines and project management would have made it very difficult to achieve. If it were possible, I would have liked to include a situation in chapters 2 and beyond, with one complete case per chapter and a full set of investigative actions. But when I created the first chapter of Judgment, I realized that this would be a tremendous volume. We gave up on this due to the schedule, and from chapter 2 onward, we finished each chapter with a development that made us curious about what was to come next. And we made the development flow smoothly, with the first priority being that the main storyline be enjoyable. If you've already played Judgment, the drastic shift in vision due to constraints is sad to hear. An episodic narrative dedicated to investigative action with more frequent player participation sounds like what I wish Judgment was. It's a shame to know they had the right idea without the right resources to make it happen. There's a few tells in Judgment itself to help corroborate this. Like this disguise system propped up as some fundamental tool in Yagami's arsenal, but can only be used in specific scripted events. And events, plural, is generous. I'm pretty sure you only use a disguise six or seven times in the 80 hours of your Judgment playthrough. Yet, it has a dedicated spot in your menu, and is the closest thing to the outfit selection from previous titles. It's odd we're given two different lockpicking minigames. I imagine both of these were thrown in together, and with more development time, one would have been left on the cutting room floor to keep features streamlined. Yagami has a drone he uses to spy on suspects, and even slaps a gun on it in one side case to take out enemy drones trying to intercept him. But there aren't any drone fighting segments outside of this side case, and drone spying segments are fewer in number than disguise events. Unless we count the VR play spot in Judgment, which makes use of the lockpicking and drone fighting features. It makes me think the VR minigame was intended to make these incomplete abilities feel more present than they are. What we have is an awkward half-step, an experience teasing us into believing it's different and new, but quickly walks back its promises. It's afraid to commit to its premise, and as your playthrough goes on, it starts to resemble the same old thing it swore it wasn't. And because it's starting to look a lot like another Ryuga Gotoku game, it's about time we started treating it as one. Is this just Yakuza, or is there like some like special like some gimmick to it no there's a there, it's not yakuza it's it's uh, uh it's uh, it's distinct uh you know it's a different guy look at him look at that bomb here's another hosokawa quote straight from an in-house interview at sega Thinking about the Ryu Gagotoku studio in the medium to long term, I really wanted to break out of this state where the Yakuza series is the only pillar holding us up, 
and that was another reason that I wanted to make a new title. That was why I wanted to try something different. Despite Hosokawa's best intentions, it's impossible to separate his new title from Like a Dragon's tenure or its design. When Judgment isn't trying to be a detective drama, it's trying to be Like a Dragon. Normally, saying if we take away the detective aspects of Judgment, we're left with a Yakuza game would be hyper-reductive. But when your detective elements are so sparingly and sporadically used in the first place, are you really stripping away much? Like a Dragon titles are made up of a few ingredients. A stylish fighting system with a low skill ceiling, various minigames dubbed play spots scattered around a map, and a storyline centered around conspiracy, mystery, or murder, serving as a metaphor for some sort of internal dilemma. Now, how is Judgment any different? Are there any significant changes to its gameplay loop to justify not calling it a Like a Dragon game? I certainly don't think so, hence why I'm even covering it in the first place. Here's the silver lining. As a Like a Dragon title, Judgment serves the series well, because it follows through with ideas from its predecessor. Yeah, Judgment has a predecessor, and it's not Yakuza 2, it's not Yakuza 3, or 4, or 5, or 6. Judgment's predecessor is Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise. Because Judgment repurposes a ton of Lost Paradise's mechanics. Combo-based heat moves are back in Judgment, performing combos to activate finishers even if it's as simple as wall jumping or enemy hopping is the basis for Judgment's fighting system. Yagami's strongest finishers, heat move or not, are found at the end of a combo string and his upgrade paths unlock more opportunities to unleash them. You still don't believe me. Okay. Lost Paradise's talismans, with their unique heat move abilities and strong passive buffs, make their return in Judgment as essences. Essences are consumable items you can activate during fights to increase the experience gain from it, give Yagami a special move he can activate with Circle, or add special passives such as turning all your moves into a guard breaking attack. Oh, but there's no insta-kill move, unless you count this. Even if I disagree with his detective methods, Yagami's fighting style is one of the most technical and satisfying control schemes I've touched in this series. It punishes button mashing, rewards good timing, and wants you to think ahead of your choices. And for the players who don't want to bother with accuracy or have trouble executing the more complicated heat moves, essences simplify the action and provide strong advantages against enemies. The spectacle of Like a Dragon's fighting system is in full effect and it's backed up by some dazzling particle effects and much improved ragdoll physics. The Dragon Engine finally gives bodies weight, a small change bringing a massive improvement to the way dismantling the skeletons of men feels. Judgment's solid grasp of the Ryuga Gotoku franchise extends further than its fighting system. The VR board game is a bright and colorful minigame about rolling dice, landing on spaces with specific challenges, and getting to the end goal to keep your prizes. For my Dragon Quest heads out there, it's the Pachisi or Sugoroku game from Dragon Quest 3. Drone racing is astonishingly way more exciting than it sounds. Multiple tracks to race through with built-in risky shortcuts and power-ups you have to thread the needle to acquire means every lap you run is unique. The Sega arcades have a great callback to Dead Souls in Kamado of the Dead, a light gun shooter where you fight some familiar zombies and some brand new ones. I see you, Ryuga Gotoku Studios. Where the hell is my Dead Souls port? There's no way you made new zombie models for this virtual arcade machine to not use them again. Come on, give daddy what he wants. Even Mahjong gets an extra rule set and a set of challenges to complete winning hands for, and you know Judgment isn't doing much for me when the added Mahjong content isn't changing my mind about it. Here we are again, with the Dragon Engine showing off just how versatile it can be, proving once again its adaptability and utility. But Judgment inherits all the qualities of a Like a Dragon title. The good, the bad, and the ugly. If you're a quest perspective veteran, you'll know I'm not a huge fan of how Ryuga Gotoku writes its women characters. Judgment isn't an exception. Mm, uh, okay, so this one's complicated. If we're being fair, and we shouldn't have to be because of other gameplay segments, 
Judgment is almost a total 180 on the way it represents women compared to the negative portrayals of previous entries. It was a relief when the side cases and judgment started to pile up on the side of better treatment towards women in general. Here's a story about a woman who thinks her husband is cheating on her, and her fears turn out to be validated. Here's a story about an assault where the victim isn't blamed. Here's a couple of side cases about stalkers and serious examples of how dangerous they actually are. Side cases in Judgment are obvious, active efforts to improve the portrayal of women in the series and challenge existing notions about how they are treated. The mystery is how. How is there such a vast difference from one title to the next in the way they write their women characters? I've got a theory, supported by a few interview quotes. Remember the interview with Dengeki Online? Well, Koji Yoshida and game design supervisor Masao Kinosaki had this to say about Judgment's side cases. First, everyone in the planning team would start by coming up with a story for the content, and then we would have Nagoshi look at the ones that passed. And if he gave his permission, we would make a scenario out of them. Once the scenario is created, we have Nagoshi read it again, and repeat the process until we get permission. It has been a long time since I have seen Nagashi read through and check each of the so-called sub-story, level stories, and scenarios. With Ryo Gagotoku, the worldview has already been established, so we basically leave it up to the team. Allegedly, Nagoshi read and approved every side case, and the planning team came up with the proposals which would eventually make their way to him. But when did the drastic change in side case perspectives occur? Well, this is purely my speculation, and my speculation isn't always spot on, but there's this little quote by Daisuke Sato and Hosokawa from the in-house Sega interview. We also used a lot of new hires for this project. That's right, we asked new graduates and mid-career hires alike about their preferences and aptitude. I am attempting to connect some distant dots here, I know, but it's possible the fairer representation of women in these side cases is a result of the planning team having younger members of the studio propose their own side case ideas. And credit where it's due, asking your younger peers to help write better stories is definitely one way to avoid being regressive in your work. But remember what I said, it's almost a total 180, and the parts not making the cut are pretty sketchy. Instances where a woman ended up being the villain in a side case bounced right off me, because there was a fair balance struck between men and women being up to no good in judgment. If anything, the con women Yagami meets help make the world a little more believable. Those don't really matter, because what judgment gets wrong, it gets really wrong. Downplaying the horrible reality of sexual harassment in the workplace. Fridging a woman at the start of the game and then using a flashback sequence to objectify the woman and giving us an achievement for ogling her boobs and her butt. Coercing a woman co-worker to go undercover as a hostess at a club, have three men discuss how hot she is right in front of her like she isn't there, and then have us play as her in a segment downplaying the kinds of things men say when they catcall women. But none of those are as unsettling and creepy as being given the option to date 19 and 20 year old girls as a 35 year old man! Oh my god! Oh my god! The division between Judgment's side cases and Judgment's main scenario in regards to this is baffling, especially when Nagoshi apparently approved each side case. Or is it? Remember, it's likely whoever wrote the main scenario for Judgment, whoever wrote the script, wasn't communicating with whoever was managing the side cases. We established this likelihood earlier when discussing how obvious setups don't have satisfying payoffs in Judgment's narrative. So who wrote the script and main scenario for Judgment? Oh no. While Toshihiro Nagoshi and Kazuki Hosokawa worked together on developing the overall Judgment concept, Tsuyoshi Furuta is credited as storyboard and script writer. We've seen Furuta's work before. He wrote the story for Dead Souls and the script for Yakuza 6. And as you can tell, I'm not a fan of his creative choices. But I'm not bringing him up just to stamp my feet and get mad about some guy existing in a writer's room. I'm bringing him up because his work follows a particular pattern, and the pattern runs parallel with problems the series is plagued with. While I'll happily tell you the Like a Dragon series is full of nationalist propaganda, 
I can also say it's about dreams, or a broken system, or two men caring about each other very much. My experience covering the Yakuza series has gone from unbridled enthusiasm for a series I was interested in but never got to play in full, to a feeling not unlike trying to enjoy a cool party while constantly declining an offer to shoot up heroin. There's issues I'm having trouble ignoring. Some are big, like nationalism and misogyny. Some are smaller, like an allergy to subtlety or a complete lack of narrative focus. And Furuta is at this party, asking me if I'm having a good time while he waves a very sharp needle in my face. Regretfully, I think Furuta's style of writing is everything I can't stand about Ryuga Gotoku. When I say we've seen his work before, I mean we've seen what he's writing about in Judgment before. The government conspiracy escalation judgment goes through, the evil pharmaceutical company testing their drugs on humans, and the complete absence of tact when discussing certain real-world issues for the sake of the viewer. Something I haven't seen discussed about judgment is the super obvious PSA messaging about Alzheimer's. At two or three stopping points in the narrative, characters, usually medical professionals, will go on entire monologues about Alzheimer's and how it's destroying Japan from the inside. Uh, now listen, as far as propaganda goes, an explanation about what Alzheimer's disease is isn't one to get upset about. The problem is the way Furuta goes about including these discussions in his writing. Everything grinds to a halt whenever Furuta wants to have a conversation about whatever he believes is harming Japanese society these days. We saw this in Yakuza 6 in smaller doses. Characters will interrupt their hasty exposition to digress about foreign policies or past wartime exchanges in awkward fashion. In layman's terms, the guy does not know how to create organic dialogue. Every detail about his messaging needs to be explicitly stated by a character, including false information I find a tad bit nefarious. Again, this has less to do with Furuta actually being a supervillain and more to do with his tendency to fearmonger in his work. There's this absurd statistic he writes in Judgment about how you have a 50% chance to inherit Alzheimer's from your parents if they had it, and as you can probably tell, it's not necessarily true. That particular statistic is about early onset Alzheimer's, which only occurs in less than 10% of all Alzheimer's patients, and a smaller group of that 10% have it due to a genetic mutation. It's a 50-50 chance of you inheriting this specific mutation, if either of your parents have it, which makes it likely for you to have early onset Alzheimer's. You can all exhale now. Misleading information like this is dangerous, and it's not the first time we've seen it from Furuta. This is why I insist on people not taking everything Ryuga Gotoku Studios says with absolute faith. But ironically this time, I digress. If Furuta isn't leading us astray with bad info, or writing another cutscene where a character over explains everything happening in the plot, he's having a hard time wrapping up his loose ends and trying to squeeze in a last minute drop of subtext into his story. Remember how Yakuza 3 had an entire chapter called The Plot, where the game just dumps a ton of exposition onto you for a solid 20 to 30 minutes? Judgment has multiples of those sections as we mentioned before. Scenes where characters just tell Yagami the answers he's looking for and proceed to explain how it all makes sense. A classic lesson in Show Don't Tell, except there are 30 or so threads which need to be tied together by the end of the story. Much like in Yakuza 6, our villain has had very little screen time and lacks so much character development, Furuta felt the need to last minute give him a tragic backstory. And I mean last minute. What? Yeah. Oh my god! Shut up! Shut up! Shut the f up! It is too late! It is too late for this! We are at the end! Oh my god, we are at the end! We are at the end! This is no time for a tragic backstory! Oh god, I hate that! Oh no! You can see the writing in Judgment struggling to keep itself together. It adds layer upon layer of mystery, but strains under the weight of its own buildup. Eventually, it abandons those layers without resolving them in interesting ways, and then adds more despite the narrative approaching its natural conclusion. 
A great example, and one people should remember, is Judgment's sudden decision to include supernatural elements such as Yagami seeing the ghosts of the dead, which is then corroborated by one of his allies. Yagami -san. Then ending the game with an out of nowhere and contextless takeaway about God's plan. Even for a Like a Dragon story, no, especially for a Like a Dragon story, this is rough. At no point up until the end of Judgment was there any discussion about God or the supernatural occurring whatsoever. Judgment doesn't have religious subtext, nor does it ever tease the possibility of ghosts being real. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yakuza 6 had shoehorned ghosts in it too! What the hell? If there's a Deus Ex Machina equivalent for writers suddenly wanting their story to mean something, this is it. Rubber Bullets had a better setup than God's plan. Evil villain Satoru Iwata had a better setup than God's plan. Again, this isn't to say Furuta's a bad person. It's not about the man himself. The parts of Ryuga Gotoku he champions in his writing, however, are what classify Ryuga Gotoku when it's at its worst. If viewed as a Like a Dragon game, Judgment, again, shows a lack of confidence in what makes it unique or interesting compared to its lineage. Great strides in fairer representation are marred by trite, stereotypical, and downright suspect inclusions. A decent premise for a mystery meanders for 50 hours until hastily concluding. And interesting new mechanics are downplayed to avoid alienating the fanbase. Even though distancing themselves from what was recognizable was the point of Judgment's inception to begin with. Which unfortunately means, if the intent was to make Judgment a new franchise separate from the rest, I think they failed. I think there's too many things similar to really consider this a brand new franchise. Because Judgment is a fun like a dragon game, but it wasn't supposed to be one. And that's a tragedy. There isn't much left to say other than to reiterate the question. What exactly is Judgment? Here's your answer. It's a mess. A combination of exciting promise, wasted potential, refreshing perspective, and tired nonsense. And I still kind of dig it? Here's the thing. Judgment might not be a solid detective story, but it has these moments of greatness when you can briefly glimpse the vision its creators were going for. Yagami and Kaido have great chemistry when they're allowed to be in the same scene together, and the comedic timing in Judgment is excellent. And sure, Yagami ends up getting into fights with everyone, but fighting feels so good in Judgment. Yagami's more technical fighting style really insists upon mastery of his combos, and the spectacle you can create is some of Like a Dragon's finest, flashiest selection. Yeah, it might have the same issues I've taken with the series before, but I can't ignore the fact it's also taken huge steps to be better about those issues too. It's another Like a Dragon title, but also not, and I can't completely disregard everything in it setting it apart. My point is, if Judgment is a half-glass situation, then I'd rather think of it like a half-glass fool. Because for all its faults, middling Yakuza game isn't very high on my list of things to dislike. Signed, a Dead Souls aficionado. I don't know how else to describe my feelings for it. It's a mess, and I don't love it, but I respect it. I'm happy it exists. It might not be the answer that makes the most sense, or the one you wanted to hear, but it's the truth. Mine, anyway. The next one's inspired by Dragon Quest? Hey, yo!